sorry. We lost 16 ladies. And they're not the first and they're not the last. So we managed to save B. But these people are human beings. It is not their fault. They're ignorant, they're desperate. They're not educated. We need to help them. We have tried our best. My name is Apita Oman Yanda Onine. We do not want to go to Oman. Apiva Beragan. Komahari Beragan. We have this voice note from all these 16 ladies that were sent to us from the secret phone. That person is actually affiliated like a freelance person with a sub-agency. It is the sub-agency that actually is connected to the agency which is registered in the Foreign Employment Bureau. So as you can see, the track is very, it can easily be covered up. Hi, um, I'm Stephanie Sirivardhan and I'm here today to talk about a very, very um, important and heartbreaking topic. Um, we suspect it to be and we believe it to be human trafficking and this is something that happens very much in Sri Lanka. It happens all over the world but it happens here in Sri Lanka as well. Um, how we got involved with this is um, there was a lady who worked at our, our house and she's been with my family for years. Um, she's pretty much family to us. and. For a year or so, we hadn't really, she hasn't been with us, but we heard that she found a job to go to Oman. And we called her, she called us, and we asked her for, you know, make sure everything is right, legit, give us the documents. Unfortunately, um, she did not share anything with us, and we found out that she had left to Oman uh, on Sunday, last Sunday, so that is the 6th of November. Um, five days later, four or five days later, her daughter reached out to my mother and myself. And her daughter was extremely panicked. Um, and I spoke to her and we found out that our lady, uh, I'll call her B. So we found out um, that they were all locked in a room. Their phones were confiscated. There were 16 of them. Um, and. It's been a few days, they had no access to their families, so they had not heard, uh, so the daughter had not heard from B. And luckily, there was this one lady from the Philippines who had a secret phone. So even though their phones were confiscated, there was a secret phone and she reached out with that. And it was very obvious that something was wrong. And that's not how you treat people. That's not how you treat humans. Um, we asked her to send her location, her WhatsApp location. Uh, and that way we found out that they were actually in Abu Dhabi. They were not in Oman. And so we called everybody because we immediately understood this sounds like human trafficking. Um, and a few days ago, uh, it, the news had announced that 45 Sri Lankan women were actually auctioned off um, and sold um, for sex trafficking as escorts and this was a huge news so we were very afraid and we called everybody we knew my family is in the police so we were able to reach out to the C director of CID and we immediately put a message to Interpol as well sharing the location of these ladies we called absolutely everybody we knew uh, parliamentarians uh, am ambassadors uh, ministers uh, and then they told us, okay, you need to go to the Foreign uh, foreign Employment Bureau because that is where an official complaint needs to be happen because there is a legal process as well. So we went there uh, and uh, Dushant found out that these ladies were actually registered. It was a family member who had suggested an individual in the location in, in uh, the northern region, so in Hatton, where they lived, who had said, go to this person, this person can give you a job. That person is actually affiliated like a freelance person with a sub-agency. It is the sub-agency that actually is connected to the agency which is registered in the Foreign Employment Bureau. So as you can see, the track is very, it can easily be covered up. Um, and these ladies who were taken saying that they're going to find work in Oman 
were actually only registered to work within the United Arab Emirates. And I am sure because most of them probably had never traveled before, probably didn't even have a passport before, were not educated on the legalities all of this, of all of this, or probably don't even know the geography, they didn't or didn't know or they were not aware that Oman is actually a separate state and that they don't have the right to go and work there as well. Anyway, these women were taken to Abu Dhabi um, and we managed to convince, we called the police in Abu Dhabi as well, and the embassy finally went um, and spoke to these ladies uh, to the live location and then uh, they had to break down the door to get to these women. And as you can see, these women were so confused and they're scared and at the same time they were all interviewed on a white screen by the embassy and this video including a video of B who was our lady was sent to us saying yes I am hoping to have some work uh, in Oman I want to go um, and none of the reality of how if they actually go to Oman because they don't have the authority to work in Oman, it is as if they are jumping countries and what they're doing is illegal. So the government technically does not have the jurisdiction or the need to protect them or follow up on their security. So that way we lose track of these women. And also all of them were taken on a tourist visa because in Dubai, in the UAE, it is allowed for you to go there on a tourist visa and then later convert it to a work visa. So, so that way, that, was, that path was clear, but the, clear, the path to Oman was not clear because they don't have the right to work there. And if they move to Oman, they, the agency was actually going to take these women by bus to Oman on a certain date. We had no idea. So we told them we need to talk to these ladies and explain the reality of the situation because they had no idea that they were putting their lives at risk. When we talk about human trafficking, there is sex trafficking, so they're sold as sex slaves. There's slavery, they can be sold for their organs. The best case scenario is that they are there as um, illegal workers, and most of the times they're beaten, they're, they're, they're treated in the most inhumane manner. And most of the time, because they go there on a tourist visa, their passports are confiscated and they have no access to their families. Most of the time, they will not be able to come back. If the few lucky ones who do manage to come back will have to pay a huge fine and lose all the money that they worked so hard for if they were paid such. Um, we spoke to a few human rights agencies as well and there were some studies done. And this is a situation that happens so often. We were able to finally get a chance, two days later, we were able to get a phone to B. After arguing and, and, and calling everybody we knew and saying, we don't believe until we hear it from their mouth that they want to go to Oman and unless we have a chance to explain to them the reality of the situation and give them that knowledge, we cannot believe that they want to continue going to Oman. When we got the call with B, she put us on speakerphone and the entire thing that I just explained to you was explained to them and the danger that they had put their lives in. All of these 16 women at that point said, we don't want to go to Oman, we want to go to the embassy. Because at this point we had already told the Abu Dhabi embassy, we want to be extracted, we want to repatriate her back to Sri Lanka. So um, these women, were then uh, all in the same accord that they wanted to go to the embassy. Unfortunately, the embassy only sent a small vehicle. And so this is where it's interesting. You see, I feel like our em ambassadors and uh, the people who work at the embassies need to be trained and need to be sensitized towards being more emotionally intelligent, being more considerate of human emotions because we were on the phone with B, and on the other side, we were on the phone with the embassy because we, they were going, coming to extract B at this point, and we were hoping to get all the other 16 women as well. But unfortunately, the car was small, so we asked for the driver's name because who knows, when you're dealing with human trafficking, 
you need to make sure you never know they just take you kidnap you and that's it we'll never hear from you again so we said do not get into any vehicle without the driver's name so on one side we are asking the embassy please give us the contact the name of the person who is driving the vehicle they said they don't know on the other side the driver is not telling his name so imagine the situation emotionally of what this woman is going through she is scared for her life there's this 17 other women who are scared clinging on to her and what actually happened was the driver ended up manhandling her and throwing her into the vehicle she was crying we thought she was kidnapped by some random person who was tied up into all of this the the embassy was unable to reassure us that she was in safe hands and finally we managed to put my mother who speaks arabic on the line and she managed to speak to the driver and he stopped he stopped the vehicle and then we found out it was indeed a vehicle sent by the embassy and few of the embassy uh, officials did come and they met b and then they took her to a safe house we spoke to the minister at this point and uh, we had a voice recording from these other women saying my name is x my name is apita oman yanda one ne we do not want to go to oman apiva beragan koma hari beragan we have this voice note from all these 16 ladies that was sent to us from the secret phone we sent this to everybody and we said we need to extract these women as well and we were promised that a bus would be sent to save them and take them to the safe house as well unfortunately this did not happen the embassy did reassure us saying that on monday which was a few days ago they would go and take all of these women back to the embassy and ask them one more time do you want to go back to sri lanka or do you want to go to oman because technically they need to get first hand evidence what ended up happening and what we found out was this conversation happened on over the weekend from the weekend till monday these ladies were getting calls and the agency people were putting them on speaker and somebody was saying we are from the embassy and if you want to go to back to sri lanka each of you have to pay 400000 rupees Now imagine you're a poor woman who first went and agreed to go to Oman for a job because you're desperate because you have no way to feed your family and you think this is a hope that one hope that you have to pay your debts to look after your family and you have no money and now they're saying either you choose to go and continue down this unsafe path or if you want to go back home to safety you have to pay 400000 which you do not have so this message came back to us we told the ladies do not believe anybody until they identify themselves because for all we know it could have been an actor it could have been somebody just pretending to be from the embassy trying to scare them to make sure that they go to oman because there's a lot of money involved in trafficking millions and millions of rupees and dollars so anyway monday comes the embassy people did not take the ladies to the embassy instead they went back to the house and they got a document so all of these ladies the majority of them are tamil they wrote a document saying we are okay we choose to stay and work in dubai and this is written in singhala so we were uh, the the word dubai was not even mentioned we are okay to work in this country and the title of the letter had abu dhabi written in it so uae and all their names were written in singhalese and there was a signature uh, beside it from each of these ladies this was sent by the embassy to the minister the minister sent it to us because we are continuing saying what's going on has these women been extracted the minister sends it to us saying this is what we got and this is uh what the embassy has told us now that they are, they will get jobs in dubai and the uae now the problem here is nowhere in this letter does it say we do not want to go to oman right so that is what we are fighting because the minute they go into oman we lose them we lose track of them and we are in touch with their we were in touch with their families so the daughters the husbands of about five of these ladies that's who we had access to 
and I sent the letter to them and said, did they sign this letter and are these their signatures? At this point, we also have some of their passports. The husband of one of these ladies said, this is not her signature. She has never signed like this. This is actually her signature and he sent it to us. So what we are saying here is, what is going on? We don't know. I'm just telling you the facts of what the families are saying, what the officials are saying. But the reality of the situation is this morning at 5 a.m., these very women who signed a document, supposedly, saying that they are okay to work in Dubai, were made visas to go to Oman, and at 5 in the morning, they were taken to the Abu Dhabi airport, and they were taken to Oman. And we have, we have tried to reach out to them. We have no access to them right now. We need your help. This is happening a lot. Sorry. We lost 16 ladies. And they're not the first and they're not the last. So we managed to save B. But these people are human beings. It is not their fault. They're ignorant. They're desperate. They're not educated. We need to help them. We have tried our best. So please, officials, government officials, citizens of Sri Lanka, diaspora, Help us counter this and save our innocent women of Sri Lanka because this is what's happening. We managed to save one, but we lost 16. We have no idea. Hopefully some of them will get jobs, but we don't really know. And the fact that they're not registered in the Bureau, God knows what's going to happen to them. And this agency will keep doing this unless we stop them getting this license and the right to do this. So. We have come here to talk to you about this because I think it's important that people know that this is happening and that we need to come together, all of us, our leaders, the people, and protect these innocent ones because they didn't do this illegally in a conscious mind. They did this because they were desperate and they don't know the law, so we need to help them. So if you have any information, if you have any way of supporting us, please reach out to us. And we have all the documents. We have the re voice recordings. We have hours of recordings. And let's stop this from happening. Let's try to save those women, and let's save all the future women of our country together. Thank you.